G'day folks, this afternoon I'm back out here at my local Carp and Redfin hotspot. I love this spot, which is a good thing, because under stage 3 regulations I'm not allowed to travel too far, and this is close to home. Anyway, let's go and see if we can catch any more carp or redfin. I'm going to start off with a soft plastic for half an hour or so, and if I don't do any good, I'll chuck the worms on, I'll kick back and relax. Hey you! You're watching Robbie Fishing. Now last time I was here... I was using a Strike Tiger three inch curl tail grub in banana shot colour and I flipped this soft plastic around for three quarters of an hour I suppose and I only had one strike and that was right here in front of where I'm standing right now. Now today I've gone with the uh, Lava Line Nymph, it's a nymph in Lava Line colour. I'm choosing very bright coloured lures because the water's not really suited to lure fishing, it's quite murky. I did just have a bit of a cast around down this a bit further before with a pontoon 21 tantalizer and that didn't do any good. But it's always worth trying. Right now, after about 20 minutes, I haven't had a single touch on the soft plastic. Given the dirty water or murky water, I've gone to a bladed spinner. This is one of the new Tassie blades. I've got a real bright colour. These things actually displace a lot of water, which means they'll have quite a strong vibration, which will be uh, advantageous in this murky water. Right here, folks, it's been about half an hour. I've been half an hour using soft plastics and this Tassie blade spinner. No good. It's not after lures for some reason. Even when I'm using bait, the bites are very, very soft and finicky. Anyway, let's see if the bait can be better than what the lures did. Oh my god, after just spending the best part of 10 or 15 minutes untangling lines, I'm ready to go. I like to rig them both up, bait them both up, put them both in at the same time and then relax. But what I've done, I got them tangled together and in the end I had to break one. I broke this one just so that the uh, knot would untangle so I could pull that through the tangle and I've tied that together. Which is a pretty stupid thing to do because it's probably going to create a weak spot in the line. Anyway, cross that bridge when I get to it. <laughs> right, as always I've got a pat Noster rig on both rods. When I'm in the river fishing for cod, I normally put one like this with worms and one with cheese. But uh, when I'm out here chasing redfin and carp, and I'm not chasing cod, I'll go both with worms usually, or one with worms and one with corn. And these are the old Jan Juckies, the Jan Juck worms that have been uh, serving me very, very well in this spot here recently. Right, now I'm sitting here waiting to get a nibble. It's about 14 degrees, beautiful blue sky, not a cloud in the sky now. Now, even though it's the end of August, now would be a perfect time for a snake to come out. It's only 14 or 15 degrees and it's August, but snakes usually come out around about late winter. The first thing they'll do is they'll come out of their hole and they'll lay in the sun just near their hole. And that's about where they're at now. Then as it gets warmer, they'll start venturing out and looking for a partner so that they can, they can mate. With all this long grass around, here is an absolute haven for tiger snakes. And where a lot of people come unstuck, they think, oh, it's only August, I've got a jumper on, it's not a hot, snaky day, and they couldn't be any further from the truth. They are, the snakes are absolutely out, and I just had a bite on my worms while I'm telling you about snakes. Here we go, folks, here we go, here we go. Got him. Oh, I missed him. Bugger. Bugger, 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 bugger. Put it straight back in. So it's really important that you understand that snakes do become active towards the end of winter and right about now is the perfect time and the perfect day so be very very careful where you put your feet. If you give them space you'll have no problems. It's when you're walking through grass like this and you don't see them that you can't give them space until you've got your foot on top of them that's when you can get into a bit of trouble. Yeah, old kookaburra. At the current time, 5.08. I've been here, I've been bait fishing since about half past three, so about an hour and a half, and I was casting lures around for about half an hour before that. So in that hour and a half bait fishing, I've had not a touch on this rod on the left, and stacks of bites on the rod on the right. The very first bite I hooked, and he got off almost straight away, and ever since then I've had lots of really hesitant, shy little nibbles. Let's see if I can catch him in the last hour. I missed all the action, then I was sitting there playing with my phone. This rod almost got pulled in the river. Just went absolutely hurdling. I uh, hit record, dropped the camera, come down, hooked the fish, turn around, couldn't find the camera. I don't know how the hell, I don't know how the hell I haven't lost this fish. 
<laughs> wow, what a commotion, and I didn't get any of it. All right, what I might do is I'm just going to double check that I'm recording after all of that drama. Don't go anywhere, fish. Yes, I am recording. This rod has not had a bite all night. And then I was looking at my phone and I looked up and it was literally bent like it is there now. It was bent right over. I raced down, the rod got pulled off that fork and was laying there and heading for the water. I picked it up and the fish was way down there. And I'm like, where did my GoPro go? It was on the ground back here behind me. <laughs> anyway. All fun and games, folks. All fun and games. I tell you what, just because I know so many people have been waiting patiently for this, if, and only if, I've got a couple of plastic bags in the car, I will keep this fish, this carp, and I'll cook it in my tandoor. I know I'm getting a nibble on this other rod. The one that's had millions of nibbles all afternoon, this one here that hasn't had any nibbles is the only one that's uh, caught a fish. Oh, I'm about to catch a fish. So if, if and only if, there is a, uh, if and only if there is a plastic bag in my car, I'll turn this into a catch and cook carp video, provided it looks good when I get it in. If it's got sores or something on it, I'm not going to want to do that, am I? Talking about getting it in. That's not how you do it. I need more practice at getting it in, in the net. Right. That was so exciting. I can't believe I wasn't, uh, I was playing with my phone as you do. All right, here we go, here we go, here we go. Come on, come on, come on, fishy. In the net. All right, I'll get a measurement. Then I'll look in my bag and see if I've got any uh, plastic bags. And if so, this is going to be a magnificent tandoor oven meal. Yeah. Oh dear, here's the moment of truth. How long is he? He looks pretty big. 58. So my last three trips here, I've caught a 64, a 54, and a 58. 58 centimetres. Mate, you are just absolutely beautiful fish. I'm going to eat you. Down, down. Prices are down. You're getting a big body now. Come on. Come on. That was a big bite. He's still there. He's still there. Oh, come on. That was the best bite I've had all night. Apart here, something's still playing with it. It must be still there. Just dancing around a little bit. Come on. Got him. I bet you this is a little red fin. I was just, uh, look at the size of him. It is a little red fin. <laughs> uh, one carp and one red fin for the night. I reckon that's what's been biting my line all night. Tiny weeny little red fin, just like that. There you go. See ya, buddy. never filleted a carp before. This is the first time I've done it. I've got to tell you, those scales are like armour. But anyway, I've cut them around the rib cage here, as you can see, to keep as many bones out as I can. I believe there's still a lot of bones in here. Now I've just got to skin the fish, and then I'm right to go. that you can make a handbag out of that <laughs> that stinks that absolutely stinks and I reckon that's where all the bad smell comes from the meat it smell itself just smells quite fishy it doesn't smell too bad but I've got me two fillets I stuffed the first one up a little bit I didn't do a very good job around here that was because this knife wasn't sharp enough and it was struggling I've got to tell you carp skin is very very tough but anyway, there's plenty of meat there for me to play with. I better have a wash up.
Here we go folks, we've got 10 fillets about that size, 10 pieces. I'm going to cook three or four now in the frying pan for myself. I'm not going to film that, I'm just going to cook them and see how they come out. And the rest will go in the tandoor to finish off my carp catch and cook video. Rightio folks, now it's time for the second best part. It's time to light the tandoor oven and cook the fish, cook the carp. And I say this is the second best part because obviously the best part is actually eating the carp. Right? Right, now for anybody that hasn't already seen me use this before, this is a tandoor oven. It's an artisan tandoor by artisantandoors.com.au Basically it's a, uh, it's a primitive way of cooking. It's a traditional stove, it's a ceramic stove. I light a fire in it, then once the fire is raging and there's a lot of hot coals, I let the fire burn down so that there's just a heap of red hot coals down in the bottom. And then I put my food in the top, put the lids on and let it bake. Right, now while I'm waiting for the fire to die down to coals, I just want to explain to you what spices I'm putting with this carp. This recipe was sent to me by the Kyneton Angling Club on Facebook a few weeks ago, and actually on Instagram, sorry, and I actually went out and made it. Now, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of this over the carp, I'll spray it with a bit of olive oil, then I'll sprinkle this, sprinkle this over it before I put it in the oven. Here's what it says, get a container with a lid in it, put two teaspoons of black pepper, one tablespoon of salt, one tablespoon each of garlic powder, onion powder, paprika and cumin, a teaspoon of dry thyme and half a teaspoon or so of hot chilli powder. So that's the spice mix that I'm using. As I said, I'll put the carp in the little cake trays, I'll spray them with olive oil and then I'll sprinkle a little bit of, uh, I'll sprinkle a little, just a little bit of that seasoning. I don't want too much because it's very hot and then I'm just going to chuck it straight in. I've just realised that the camera setting that I was using for the first part of this cooking component weren't very good. I had my aperture too high, which had a too high an ISO. So I do apologise if the video quality is quite a bit grainy. Anyway, hopefully it's been fixed now. What do you get if you cross a bull terrier with a chicken? Just the bull terrier. <laughs> woof, woof, woof. <laughs> Right, now while I'm waiting for the last of the flames to die down to hot coals, I'm going to load up my, uh, my frame. Here it is here. That's the three tiers. I've got three little baking trays on there, and what I've done, I've got a bit of uh, baking paper and smeared margarine all through them to lube them up a bit. Alright, now I'm going to throw a couple of bits of carp in each one. It's a very red meat. I've got five bits of carp here. Remember, I cooked half of this fish last night, so I haven't got a whole lot. Spray a little bit of uh, extra virgin olive oil. Now, this is the spice mix that I was telling you about that I made, thanks to uh, the Kyneton Angling Group, Angling Club. Sprinkle a little bit of that on the fish. Not too much, because it's too hot. Then turn the fish over. Do the other side. That one's ready to go. Rightio, so here we have it. A couple of bits of carp, a few spices, on a uh, lubricated tray or an oiled tray. And there's three of them. The bottom one's only got one piece. How's the fire looking? Let's burn them down. Probably only another 10 minutes or so and I reckon I'll be able to cook over those coals. I put the plug in the bottom. And this bit down here, that goes in this hole over here. Just chokes the airflow and uh, once the air stops pumping in from underneath, the coals will just sit there and smolder really hot. Right, now I reckon the tandoor is looking about perfect. I'm going to go and close the hole at the bottom, crush the uh, coals down, and put my food in. 
there really is a stupid amount of heat in there. I don't think it's going to take long to cook this fish. <laughs> It's been in like five seconds and it's already sizzling. I reckon I'll only give it a couple of minutes and then I'll check it. All right, folks, it's been about 10 minutes. I've just pulled them out for a quick look and I reckon they're looking pretty good. And that looks pretty good to me. The middle one looks good. The bottom one looks a little bit overdone. Pretty hard to see in that light, but I think that was sitting all right on top of the coals. So anyway, let's dish it up and dig in. Right, now I've just finished my magnificent feed of Tandua baked carp. Now for the verdict. First of all, gutting it is horrible. They stink. It absolutely stunk. Filleting it, the skin is like armour. You just about need a chainsaw to make that first incision. It was really, really tough. And if you're going to fillet a carp, I highly recommend getting a really strong, solid knife. Nothing too flimsy until you actually get inside the skin. The skin is so strong, it's like leather. The flesh itself was actually quite easy to fill it. It was one of the easier fish to fill it, actually. It was a lot easier than a Murray Cod or a Yellow Belly. It was uh, just nice and firm flesh and easy to cut around. That bit was quite good. Right, now for the taste. How did it taste? Well, it tasted okay. It was surprisingly quite nice. Admittedly, I had a lot of spices on. I only put a little bit on, but there's some pretty warm spices in that spice mix, that Cajun mix. So the spices probably masked out a lot of the carpies taste. It looked like fish. It had the same texture as fish. And it was actually quite nice. Last night I cooked the first half in a bit of oil in the frying pan. Tonight I cooked it in the tandoor. And the tandoor one was definitely much nicer. I think the smoke from the, the, uh, the hot coals in the tandoor went right through the fish. And also being so hot, the outside of the skin, the outside of the fish sort of seared. It was like it was uh, really it cooked really hard, holding the fish together. You could actually pick it up and bite it without it breaking apart. I think the tandoor was the much better option. It was way better than inside. Inside was okay, but out here, it actually tasted quite good. And I would live off that. I could eat that all the time, except for one thing. The bones, it was so bony. Have a look. That is just, a, I don't know if you can see that or not, but that is just a handful of bones. Don't know whether the camera will focus on it. There we go. All those bones came out of that fish. Now, I filleted that fish, and I actually think I've done not too bad a job. Not too bad a job filleting it. All the rib cage bones are still there, but there are so many other bones. So the verdict is most of the smell seems to come from the skin. Once you fill up the fish and then skin the fillet, the smell seems to be all gone. You just bit, you got a bit of fish. The flesh was a lot redder than I'm used to. Normally, like yellow belly and Murray cod and redfin are all quite a white flesh. Trout can be anything from white to orange, depending on what they're eating. But the carp was quite red. That was the reddest fish I've ever eaten. And the taste-wise was actually okay. It's all about the key is getting rid of the skin. Once the skin and all that slime is gone, it's actually not too bad. And in the tandoor, it came up a treat. If only there was a way to get rid of those bones. This was much more successful than, successful than I first thought, but every bit as much fun as I assumed I would have. Thank you very much for watching. If you've liked this video, why not give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and subscribe to my channel, and then hopefully I'll see you on my next fishing adventure.